From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to talk about this month's MarTech news. Joining us is Juan Mendoza, who is the author of the MarTech Weekly, which is a weekly newsletter to help you navigate the marketing and technology industry. With thousands of subscribers from the world's largest companies, TMW serves as our newsletter here is the MarTech Podcast. And today, Juan and I are going to discuss what the hell is happening with the tech industry. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Juan Mendoza, the author of the MarTech Weekly. Juan, Happy New Year. Welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Ben. Did you have a good break? The break was wonderful. Spent a little time in Arizona out in the desert and came home to torrential rains here in Northern California. Uh, and it's not just raining here. It's raining all over the tech industry as well. Not to make a quick transition, but one, tell me what the hell is happening with the tech industry. It feels like it's a bit of pandemonium at the moment, doesn't it? It does. We've been through at least six months of sort of downturn in the, the broader tech industry, not just in MarTech, but it almost feels like it's accelerating coming into the new year. So the big news that just came down from last week is that Salesforce has just laid off 10% of their staff, which they've got staff in the tens of thousands. So it's a massive tranche of employees being let go. And they're also downsizing their expenditure from about 3 to $5 billion a year, which is actually a lot, which is about 6 to 7% of their total spending in 2022. So, you know, Salesforce is kind of like the bellwether for the MarTech industry in terms of growth and innovation. And it's got such a staying power in the industry ever since it sort of began 20 years ago. So this is actually pretty big news. It's a signal to say, well, maybe we're not out of the woods just yet in the bear markets and in the broader tech downturn. We've seen this sort of continuing rolling layoff. It seems like uh, Salesforce is going to lay off 10%. And actually, I heard in another podcast, whenever anybody lays off 10% of their workforce, that means that another layoff is coming. That the 10% is always a, well, we couldn't figure out how much to lay off. So we're going to start with 10% and we'll see what happens from there. But they laid off 10%. Then there's this second layoff. We've seen, I think, Amazon make a couple rounds of layoffs as well. Obviously, we're experiencing an economic downturn. Talk to me about why you think this is all happening. There's a few things. I think there's, there's the expectations from the tech utopia that was created over the COVID-19 pandemic. I think that's one angle. Another angle is just the amount of M&A and investment that went in from companies like Salesforce and Google and Amazon over that period. It was almost like COVID-19 happened and they decided, okay, all of these big tech companies decided to take out the checkbook and actually start acquiring companies at a rapid pace. So that's actually a lot of capital expenditure taken out. And I think the third angle is, I think there's a huge shift from having very cheap capital to deploy and loan to having way more expensive. I mean, even the Fed is, is hiking interest rates incredibly high. So you've got sort of a, a perfect storm almost, you know, it's almost like the total inverse of COVID-19 on the tech sector where at the start of the pandemic, you had really cheap capital. You had all these consumers flooding in and using e-commerce and retail services online. And then all of a sudden, everything was happening over Zoom. Everything was happening on social media networks. Everything was happening across different websites. And so that was sort of a really interesting moment to say, wow, okay, there's a lot of capital to deploy. There's a lot of investment that can be made because interest rates are pretty cheap, pretty low. But then now we're riding out of it. It's a complete opposite. You know, it's capital is quite expensive to deploy. It means that it's harder for companies to have raised money. 
It's also harder to acquire new companies and growth is stalling because I think a lot of people are taking a big break from their online life out of COVID-19. I don't know about you, Ben, but I spent a lot of time traveling last year and staying away from the screen as much as I could after two years of lockdowns in and out. So I think there's sort of three broad angles that you can sort of place on why we're still in this sort of tech downturn. I think that there's three words that you said that describe what is happening. Interest rates, that's two. And number three, pandemic. I think what happened was companies during the pandemic said, we're all moving towards this digital world. We're all going to go for fast growth. This is the time there has been a psychological change in how people perceive their digital versus their offline life. And when we see this increase, it's not going to go back to normal. That turned out to not be true. And then after that, all of a sudden, we saw the rise of interest rates. And like you said, the capital is more expensive. The venture capitalists, they aren't seeing a return and they're not just buying growth in these companies, assuming that there'll be a payoff at the end. So it sort of starts at the funds have dried up because of what's happening with the interest rates. Now, Juan, look in your crystal ball here and tell me, is what's happening now, this shift in the focus of the tech industry going from a growth-focused industry to a monetization-focused industry? The companies that are going to be successful now are the ones that are actually generating, I don't know, cash, profits, returns. Is this a good thing or a bad thing for the long-term health of the tech industry? The catch word for this whole season is responsible capital allocation, right? And that's just gobbledygook executive speak for basically saying, we got to be a little bit more careful with how we spend our money. Maybe we have less ping pong tables in the rec room. Maybe we downside our, our size, our office spaces. Maybe we spend a little bit less on the bar tab every Friday night for our employees. Like even Salesforce is looking to downsize quite a few offices that our employees are not just not going back to. I heard they're taking the top three floors off of the tower. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. A little tower circumcision, if you will. <laughs> well, you know what's funny about the Salesforce Tower is that as you go out of the bay and you go across that horizon line, it's the last thing you see in San Francisco as you go out into the ocean. And that's kind of a big statement, right? You know, San Francisco is the sort of center of the marketing technology space represented by the Salesforce Tower. But I think that there's going to be a real big pullback in spending and then focusing way more aggressively on sales, way more aggressively on, say, product-led growth and marketing and those sort of tactics, but also perhaps just even trying to retain their customers. I mean, going back to Salesforce, Salesforce said specifically that the biggest challenge right now is a lot of their customers who buy CRM software they're pulling the purse strings. They're pulling back from spending because they're saying, well, um, is a lot of this worth it? You know, mind you, we've had two to three years now of pandemic exploration and experimentation on how we use this technology, right? Like does Salesforce Marketing Cloud work for our business? Does Salesforce CRM really improve our sales processes? Does personalization on our website even create a lot of value? A lot of companies are maturing and saying, oh, well, maybe, but it's probably not worth our investment right now. And so I think the big thing here is trying to convince Salesforce customers or more broadly SaaS customers that it's actually worth the spend and that there is customers that are willing to engage with the experiences these software packages create. All right. So we're moving more towards a responsible capital allocation version of the tech industry. What do you think that's going to do for marketing? I think for marketers, like I think the broader tech industry, it's very much focused on growth and conversions. I think that it's quite interesting that I'm seeing a bigger trend towards out of home and digital out of home advertising because there's just more people out in the crowds. Like I just came back from Madrid and I can tell you from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m., the streets are crowded. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You can't even move. And that's through, say, kilometers of shopping precincts. So, so I think there's this interesting shift towards how do we capture the attention of people in the physical space again, out in the real world, and how do we invest into that sort of more broader advertising out of home, looking at more TVC as well, and sort of those tactics, because there's just more people outside now. I think that's one part of it. The other part is, yeah, focusing on growth and conversions. I mean, the other side of this is making sure that you're qualifying your customers and qualifying your leads in the right way and driving the right pipeline into your business. But I think that's still the jury's out. I think it's going to be an interesting year looking at how marketers use technology and how they shift. But one of the big things I think is shifting to out of home and particularly digital out of home and how they can leverage that to drive growth as well. You know, it's funny. You mentioned out of home. I think it's the exact opposite. I think that people are going to panic and they're going to remove their allocation for anything that isn't specifically tied to revenue. 
So a lot of the awareness driving activities are probably going to dry up. Hopefully that doesn't impact podcasting too much. I think that's one of the few areas of growth for the industry. You think out of home is going to be popular. Are there any, if you had to place bets on what is going to be successful in 2023 in terms of marketing and what won't, where are you putting your chips? I think I'm putting my chips down a few areas outside of digital out of home. I would also say perhaps retail media is an interesting space to look at. There's a lot of growth in that particular space, particularly looking at not so much related to say tech downturn, but more around the broader privacy landscape right now. The bigger players, even last week, Meta actually has faced a pretty severe ruling from the GDPR Council in Europe saying that their um, Meta's methodology for personalizing ads. So remember, Meta's value proposition to marketers and advertisers is all about personalizing ads to users, targeting the right users and tracking that user. Now, the GDPR council is actually saying that that practice is now illegal. So you're having this sort of privacy shutdown, which is leading to a more sort of bifurcation of different channels. One of those is retail media, which is looking at Amazon and Walmart and Tesco and actually advertising within the first party data spaces within online stores and e-commerce platforms. So I think retail media could be a really good one as well. And I actually think that there's going to be a return back to fundamentals. I mean, even looking at Salesforce, going back to CRM, going back and to really pulling back from all the lofty AI driven and all these other incredibly speculative innovations in the MarTech space and going back to the fundamentals, like how do you convert customers? I mean, how do you run experimentation that works? How do you run um, fantastic email marketing using CRM and marketing automation technologies to really drive growth and get more value out of your customers? I think there's going to be a retreat back to the fundamentals. So I would say some of it's boring, like CRM, it's been around forever, same as marketing automation. But on the other side, I think there's some interesting new ways of reaching customers, particularly around retail media as well. I think you're exactly right. We're seeing the advertising landscape split up and we're seeing more people focus on buying channels like Amazon. Other companies are starting to add advertising portals into their platforms. I think that we're seeing continued focus on content. Hopefully, I'll admit I am biased in podcasting, but we're seeing content marketing becoming more and more prevalent as performance marketing starts to dip. And a lot of that has to do with our ability to use first party and third party data. It's going to be an interesting year. Hopefully, it's still a positive one in the tech industry. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Juan Mendoza, the author of the MarTech Weekly. Join us again tomorrow when Juan and I continue our conversation talking about whether chat GPT will take over the world. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Juan, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Juan Mendoza, but it's spelled J-U-4-N-M-E-N-D-0-Z-4. Or you could visit his company's website, which is themartechweekly.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com, where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter, and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app, and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.